Thruster activation, say again. You are, must be ready for this thruster activation, right? Good. Yes, we are ready, Moscow. Seven minutes for one mark, and please monitor how the commands go through. No. Will do, Moscow. At this hour, uh, the International Space Station and the Soyuz vehicle flying 12 kilometers apart, uh, passing 262 statute miles uh, just uh, to the east of Argentina, about to begin a southwest to northeasterly track across the South Atlantic in an orbit inclined 51.6 degrees to either side of the equator. Now just over two minutes from the deorbit burn. Two minutes. But what about the next flight? Ah, okay, yeah. <laughs> That's crazy. Okay. In the uh, descent module, once again, Max Sarayev in the center seat as Soyuz commander, flanked on his left by Reed Wiseman as board engineer number one for tonight's entry and landing. Alexander Gerst from the European Space Agency on the right of Surayev, a unique moment for the European Space Agency, another ESA astronaut, Samantha Cristoforetti, about uh, to be launched two weeks from now, along with Terry Virts and Anton Shkaplerov to the International Space Station, that crew to fly down to the Baikonur Cosmodrome on Tuesday for the final two weeks of their training. Don't be sad. One minute away from the deorbit burn. Another flight after that. Okay, the command on the mode stabilization went through and is there. Yes, we are waiting for the opening of the SKD cover. The cover is open. Do you confirm? Uh, do you confirm, Maxim, there is GSO or uh, in uh, attitude signal? Yes. And we are standing by for Maxim. It's a reminder. During the descent, please uh, do the reports. Can now just 15 seconds away, standing by for the initiation of the deorbit burn. Uh, come with us. Okay, copy, Moscow. This thruster activated. And the deorbit burn is now underway. 047 is acceleration. Over the uh, South Atlantic, a four minute, 41 second retrograde firing of the Soyuz engine. Seven meters, eight meters. This thruster. Operated for 25 seconds, 046 is acceleration. It's stage 107. Okay, this thruster works for 38 seconds, propellant 32 seconds, 045 is the acceleration. Okay, so the burn and the time of operation, 58 seconds, 26.7, one minute, 28. Max Sarayev uh, reporting back to the Russian flight control team on the uh, duration of the burn, the rate of deceleration and propellant consumption. Minute, 18, 20 seconds, 36 meters. 
Minute 30 seconds. 40 meters. Minute 35 seconds. 44 meters. Acceleration is 0.46 and is stable. Minute 45. 48 meters. Minute 50. Five, 52 meters. And the pressure in the burner is stable. Two minutes, 54 meters. Great. Everything is according to the stable propellant. Uh, consumption 128 minutes, 10, 59 meters, 60 meters. Two minutes, 18 to 20, 64 meters. 225, 66 meters. 230, 68 meters. Good. The acceleration is stable, 046. 240, 73 meters. About two minutes to go in the deorbit burn. Everything looking great so far. 76 meters. Two minutes, 53. 79 meters. The first stage, uh, the pressure is stable, 047 is acceleration, 84.5 meters, 3 minutes 10 seconds, 87 meters, 3 minutes 20 seconds, 91 meter, 92. 3 minutes 30 seconds, 96 meters. Copy, Maxim. Thank you. And what about the continuous reporting? 3 minutes 40 seconds, uh, 101 meter. Acceleration 0 0.47, stable. 3, 48, 49, 106 meters. And the pressure is stable. 047 is the acceleration. 3 minutes, 59. 4 minutes. 256 kilograms propellant. 100 About 40 seconds left in the deorbit burn. Minutes, 10 seconds. 115 meters. 4 minutes, 20 seconds, 120 meters. 4 minutes, 27, 28 seconds, 125 meters. Okay, the command is sent, GK. So the burn is complete, 128 meters. 0 0.128.1. The thruster deactivated. The cut off command went through. And the deorbit burn is complete and perfect. We Expedition 41 on its way home after 165 days in space. A Russian Air Force Colonel, Max Sarayev. An American Navy commander and test pilot, Reed Wiseman, and a German volcanologist, Alexander Gerst, heading home for a frozen scrub of land on the steppe of Kazakhstan, touchdown expected less than 48 minutes from now. And clear, and we copy your report. Thank you. 320 BOR pressure, SA 789 and stable. Copy. Pressure 225, SA 789, and stable. Copy. We copy you loud and clear, Maxim. Thank you. Same here. Maxim, it's page 
1510. Now for the procedure. And uh, the rescue aid should be ready. And uh, then uh, until the separation itself. So say again. Page 110. Yes. Continue uh, reporting, please. Okay, copy Moscow. Russian flight controllers at the Russian Mission Control Center in Korolyov uh, urging uh, Max Sarayev, reminding him uh, to uh, continue reporting on all uh, of the spacecraft status. The next major milestone will be the separation, the pyrotechnic separation of the three sections of the Soyuz vehicle. In advance of that, uh, the uppermost section, known as the orbital module, uh, has been uh, depressurized. The crew is monitoring all of that activity on board. Uh, about uh, 12 uh, or so minutes from now, uh, the uh, Soyuz uh, will be passing out of the guaranteed range of uh, communications for space-to-space -space VHF voice capability uh, through the antennas on uh, the International Space Station, but we'll uh, continue to monitor all of the uh, conversation on this VHF loop. Uh, the Soyuz crew eventually will come into range of an Antonov-12 fixed-wing aircraft that is a flying uh, command and control center for the Russian search and recovery forces. Uh, all of the helicopters have departed uh, the Kustanai Airport. They're en route, flying low uh, below thick decks of clouds, uh, en route to the landing site some 53 miles to the northeast of the town of Arkalik. Pressure 36 millimeters. SR descent module is 789 and stable. Copy, Cepheus, we copy you loud and clear. Same here, Moscow. Maxim, it's a reminder. Before the arming of the seats, please monitor that there are no foreign objects that might be in the way of the our seat. Busha, I understand. When possible, we will do it every minute that there are no foreign objects that might interfere with the arming of the seat. Thank you so much, Maxim. I am very grateful. You're welcome. This is Mission Control Houston. You're looking at a live view of the uh, large flight control room at the Russian Mission Control Center in Karyov on the outskirts of Moscow. Uh, the Russian flight controllers in charge of uh, the Soyuz landing operations, monitoring all of the Soyuz systems as uh, Soraya, Wiseman, and Gerst uh, begin to slip out of uh, Earth orbit and move into uh, the upper reaches of the Earth's atmosphere. They will uh, reach uh, the point uh, called entry interface, uh, which is atmospheric entry at an altitude of about 400,000 feet at 9.35 p.m. Central Time. Just a few minutes later, about seven minutes after that, uh, the G-loads uh, on the crew will build up uh, to their maximum, about three to four Gs, uh, at an altitude uh, 
of about 34 kilometers at 9.42 p.m. That's just before the command is issued to uh, deploy the parachutes, first a drogue chute and then uh, the main parachute under which uh, the Soyuz will spend about 14 minutes uh, descending uh, to the landing site, which is about 53 statute miles to the northeast of the town of Arkalik in the northern zone for this uh, landing that is underway uh, following the deorbit burn uh, that occurred on time at 9.05 p.m. Central Time. It is right now 9.17 a.m. Monday morning at the landing site in Kazakhstan. Uh, the first light of day at the landing site. We're hoping to get video from the landing site before long or certainly after touchdown in order to be able to uh, share with you all of the activities uh, on the recovery of this Expedition 41 crew that began its journey to the International Space Station back on May 29th in temperatures more than 50 degrees warmer than uh, the crew will experience upon their return this evening with landing schedule 41 minutes from now. We are ready to meet you on the landing site. Thank you. Gosha, I did not understand what you said though, but never mind. The search and rescue team is ready to meet you on the landing site. That uh, search and rescue team uh, currently en route in uh, the fleet of uh, Russian Mi-8 helicopters. Two of those helicopters uh, have peeled off and are heading for the ballistic landing site uh, to the southwest of the nominal landing site. In the unlikely event, a problem would occur that uh, would result in uh, the Soyuz landing short of its intended target. But so far, all of the Soyuz systems are functioning perfectly. You know, it's very quiet. Before it was some interference. Uh, it's Alex talking from this station. Now, Cephas Moscow. We do not copy you uh, very well, but still. The PRC area is jumping up, up to around 10, and the ARU is um, around minus 64. That's value. Okay, copy. Thank you. As you can see uh, from the clock, uh, some 37 and a half minutes until the anticipated landing of the Soyuz uh, to the northeast of Arkalik. Everything going very well. Uh, the crew, uh, in its last reports, indicated uh, that uh, the pressure inside the descent module is uh, holding steady, everything in good shape. 
uh, standing by for the next milestone that will come about uh, 11 minutes, 12 minutes from now. That will be the separation of the three sections of the uh, Soyuz vehicle pyrotechnically on computer command. Sophie, as ISS, we also copy you. I wish you good luck. Thank you. Thank you, Sasha. Maxim, Reed, Alexander, Yelena is sending her, uh, her regard. She is, uh, you know, very, a little bit worried about you. She is, um, she is concerned. Alexander Samakutiaev on board the International Space Station uh, talking uh, to the crew on the Soyuz, talking to Max Sarayev, uh, indicating that the crew is wishing uh, the returning crew in the Soyuz vehicle, the station crew is, uh, wishing all, all the best for a soft landing. Time to touch down, 36 minutes. But everything on board the Soyuz is in good shape so far as uh, the crew uh, targets its landing zone to the northeast of Arkalik with search and recovery helicopters from the Russian uh, search and recovery forces, Ros Aviatsa, uh, currently en route flying below thick decks of clouds toward the landing zone. This is the point uh, that we anticipated uh, either choppy communications, uh, sporadic communications, or a complete loss of communication as uh, the Soyuz descends uh, toward the atmosphere with uh, atmospheric entry expected uh, in about 12 minutes, passing uh, soon out of range uh, through relay communications through the International Space Station itself. Uh, soon. Uh, as uh, the Soyuz approaches the landing zone, it will uh, pick up communications through the Antonov fixed-wing aircraft that are currently flying over the nominal landing zone. The uh, reports being received uh, from the helicopters uh, currently en route to the landing zone is uh, that uh, they continue to fly uh, at a very low altitude uh, due to uh, thick clouds and uh, considerable fog, uh, but they are uh, flying below all of that. So uh, the Soyuz, uh, under its main chute, uh, will be descending uh, in all likelihood out of range of uh, television cameras uh, that are uh, positioned at the landing zone itself. Moscow, how copy. Well, Gosha, it's Alex speaking from the station. It looks like it is still LOS. Okay, so we'll continue calling them. Cetius, ISS, how copy.
the uh, International Space Station and, of course, the uh, Soyuz vehicle uh, flying uh, at a lower altitude now as it uh, prepares to enter the Earth's atmosphere, uh, traveling over Western Africa, moving from southwest to northeast. This is Moscow. If you can hear us, please. Gosha, the separation is at 632, right? Uh, it's Alex from ISS. Yes, uh, 3247. Okay, 47. Five minutes. Cepheus, Moscow, if you can hear, please re reply. And again, uh, this was expected, uh, loss of communications uh, because of the uh, distance uh, between the International Space Station flying at an altitude of 262 statute miles. How copy? Gosha, it's uh, very quiet. There was some noise, and that's it. Copy, Alex. We are about uh, four minutes away from the expected uh, separation of the uh, three sections of the Soyuz vehicle. That will occur at an altitude of 87 miles above the Earth. We are currently just under 30 minutes until touchdown. Moscow, if you can hear us. The uh, sequence of events uh, from this point on uh, will move rather rapidly. This is Moscow. This is Mission Control Moscow. How do you read us? That is ISS. This uh, is this is the Mission Control Moscow.
Station Moscow Space to Ground One for Yelena. Yelena? What is the date? What are the numbers? So the purity error is about 40. There's uh, no noise whatsoever. We heard some clicking initially, now it is really quiet. I understand, Sasha. If you start hearing them, let us know right away. Absolutely. If everything is uh, proceeding as planned, uh, the modules should be separating from one another. The pyrotechnic uh, separation uh, between uh, the three sections. And uh, data received at the Russian Mission Control Center indicates uh, that the three uh, sections have in fact separated. The information that the separation occurred. The visiting vehicle yes. officer here in Mission Control confirms through data received uh, that the uh, module separation has occurred. So the descent module is now flying free as uh, it prepares to enter the Earth's atmosphere with temperatures uh, around the spacecraft building to some 2,500 degrees. Must have. That is obvious, yes. Believe me. Sophia, Mission Control Moscow. This is, yeah, do you hear us? Yes. First, we hear you now. And although the communications is sporadic, uh, the Soyuz crew uh, in good shape acknowledging the calls of flight controllers at the Russian Mission Control Center. This is Mission Control, this is calling Moscow, do you hear us? No, this is... 24 minutes until touchdown. The uh, Russian search and recovery forces and the Mi-8 helicopters en route to the landing site. Moscow, if you hear us, please report on separation. The uh, flight control team in Karolyov asking uh, the crew on board the Soyuz if they can hear uh, the calls up to them uh, to confirm the module separation. However, data uh, received uh, on the ground uh, through the Antonov-12 uh, fixed-wing aircraft indicates that uh, we did have a nominal module separation standing by uh, for the Soyuz to now enter the Earth's atmosphere at an altitude of 400,000 feet. If you hear us, please report on separation. Sophia's Mission Control Moscow. Uh, Gosha, we cannot hear them either. That is station. Copy, we'll wait for them to come on. Once uh, the Soyuz passes into the uh, lower uh, altitude of the atmosphere, uh, past this period of peak heating, uh, the uh, Soyuz heat shield will be jettisoned uh, to expose uh, the altimeters and the um, soft landing engines at the base of the Soyuz that will begin uh, to uh, provide navigational data to the onboard computers uh, to measure uh, the altitude of the Soyuz in relation to its uh, landing site and uh, range to touchdown. Insertion to atmosphere. Okay. 
These communications uh, are expected to improve shortly uh, once the Soyuz passes within range of the uh, Antonov fixed wing aircraft that is in place over the landing zone some 53 uh, statute miles to the northeast of the town of Arkalik. This is here, Mission Control Moscow. Uh, this is station calling, Cephas. Uh, do you hear us? This is Mission Control Houston uh, receiving our first views uh, from the landing site to the northeast of Arkalik. The uh, visibility is uh, not uh, terrible. Uh, there are low clouds, several decks of low clouds that likely will uh, preclude our ability to see the Soyuz descending under uh, the parachute. Uh, the uh, temperature is quite cold uh, in the low 20s Fahrenheit, uh, but otherwise uh, the landing conditions uh, are uh, said to be favorable. Uh, by uh, those uh, in charge of the search and recovery operations on scene. Under 20 minutes now until touchdown. About three minutes from now, uh, the crew uh, in the uh, descent module, Max Sarayev, the Soyuz commander in the center seat, flanked on his left by Reed Wiseman, Alexander Gerst on his, le on his right, uh, should be uh, feeling the first uh, effects of the uh, most significant uh, G-forces on the way down. Three to four Gs uh, to be pulled uh, by the crew, uh, their first uh, sensation of Earth's gravity in 165 days. We're now just 18 minutes until the anticipated touchdown of the Soyuz TMA-13M spacecraft that uh, launched back on May 29th with Max Sarayev, Reed Wiseman, and Alexander Gerst on board, uh, the crew completing a mission that has spanned uh, more than 70 million statute miles. The uh, Soyuz uh, descent module now approaching uh, an altitude of about 21 miles. Uh, the crew uh, now experiencing uh, maximum G loads of about uh, three to four Gs. This uh, should last uh, only a few minutes as uh, we are standing by now for uh, the command that will open the parachutes. That's expected about uh, two minutes from now. <laughs> Снимаем. 
Ждем вас в цепи. Слышим? Да, электрушка. Начала падать. Максимально было 5 единиц. Принято 5 единиц. Без пустера возить. Ау. Okay, so the G-loads were 5 and... 7 seconds. So far everything is nominal Moscow. Copy, Sefiv. 0, 13, 15. Roll. 3.5 and 3.5 is below. It is dropping. Okay, copy, Sefiv. 3 now is G-load. We are approaching the completion of the control. Okay, copy. G-load. And the G-load is uh, Please continue reporting. We copy you now. Good news. Uh, communications established uh, with the Russian Mission Control Center and the crew on board uh, the Soyuz descent module. Everything in great shape. The crew uh, reporting it feels well. And you can hear from time to time the beeping of the uh, Soyuz radio beacon that is sending out navigational information uh, uh, to uh, the Antonov fixed-wing aircraft, uh, the command uh, and control aircraft that is flying over the landing zone uh, to the northeast of the town of Arkalik. Next up uh, will be the command uh, to begin uh, the deployment of the parachutes. First, uh, two pilot parachutes are deployed, the second of which extracts the drogue chute. The drogue chute is then released, measuring about 24 square meters, slowing the Soyuz down from a descent rate of 230 meters per second to just 80 meters per second. That uh, will be followed in short order by the release of the main parachute that covers an area of about 1,000 meters. The uh, release of the main chute slows the Soyuz to a descent rate of a, about 7 meters per second, first yanking the Soyuz to uh, an angle of about 30 degrees to expel heat, then shifting the Soyuz to a straight vertical descent. The uh, crew reporting it is doing well, and uh, that uh, presumably means that the chutes have been deployed. The Soyuz now descending under its main parachute.
Coming up uh, on about 10 minutes until touchdown. Still going to space to ground one. Uh, but uh, there's no visual contact yet. The uh, search and recovery forces now confirming uh, not only audio but visual contact with the uh, Soyuz uh, descent module as uh, the crew now is uh, just 10 minutes away from landing. So uh, it all seems to be nominal. They had a, a, a large uh, load. Uh, that's why they were not able to talk to us. So as soon as I hear anything else, I'll, I'll let you know right away, okay? Okay, yes, we'll be waiting, okay. Okay, agreed. Temperatures at the landing site uh, hovering around the 23-degree uh, mark Fahrenheit. Very chilly weather uh, under a leaden gray Monday morning sky uh, to greet uh, Wiseman, Sarayev, and Gerst as they come home after 165 days in space. According to the crew report, the uh, altitude is at 4.5. Uh, everything is uh, nominal on board. Um, space to ground one. Alexander. And uh, reports uh, being received at the Russian Mission Control Center indicate that uh, the crew is uh, reporting it's feeling well. Uh, those uh, communications being relayed directly to the Antonov-12 fixed-wing aircraft at the landing site. Calm with the uh, search and rescue, and uh, everything is going nominally. Okay, good, good, the things go. And, and just let us know what we are doing with the config here, and uh, yeah, you can just go ahead and uh, switch the cam. Uh, there is no, um, uh, we, we don't need uh, um, combined loops anymore, so please just go back to the nominal cam configuration. And that's, okay, good, good. We'll, we'll start that. And We're about uh, six and a half minutes away from touchdown. Everything uh, continuing to proceed by the book as uh, the Soyuz descends under its main parachute toward uh, landing uh, in a barren uh, section of north central Kazakhstan where the temperature is now uh, calculated at 23 degrees Fahrenheit to greet uh, the returning Expedition 41 crew.
with the uh, heat shield having been discarded, uh, the altimeter uh, at the base of uh, the Soyuz descent module is uh, calculating uh, the current altitude uh, toward the landing site and uh, the rate of descent, and uh, we'll feed that information into the onboard computers to trigger the firing of the soft landing engines just a few seconds before touchdown. About four and a half minutes until touchdown. No further reports, uh, but everything uh, is going well according to the data being received uh, at the Russian Mission Control Center. You're looking at a live view from a balcony camera as uh, the Russian flight controllers uh, have established uh, communications with the crew through uh, the flying Antonov uh, fixed wing aircraft at the landing zone. Now just three minutes away from the anticipated touchdown of the Soyuz. Just past uh, 2,000 2, meters and uh, we see the shoot. The uh, search and recovery forces uh, say that they are seeing the shoot, everything going well. Just 2,000 meters above the ground. About two minutes until touchdown.
the uh, Soyuz uh, should be nearing its touchdown point. We'll be standing by for confirmation uh, through uh, the various uh, loops and the uh, search and recovery forces uh, that we are monitoring. This is Mission Control Houston. Uh, the front screen of the Russian Mission Control Center uh, with the Russian words, Yest Posadka, uh, flashing uh, as it always does, indicating they've landed. Uh, we are still waiting uh, for a, a further confirmation, uh, but it appears as if the crew uh, landed uh, just shy of 9.59 p.m. Central Time, which would be 9.59 a.m in Kazakhstan on Monday morning, again, awaiting uh, confirmation from the Russian search and recovery forces. And uh, now the search and recovery forces uh, have indeed confirmed the landing of uh, the Soyuz TMA-13 and uh, we'll refine that landing time uh, as 9.58 and 35 seconds p.m. Central Time. 9.58 and 35 seconds p.m. Central Time for the landing of Soyuz TMA-13M. 9.58 uh, a.m. Kazakhstan time on Monday morning. Max Sarayev, Reed Wiseman, and Alexander Gerst are home back on Earth after 165 days in space. Uh, the vehicle landed, uh, lying on the site, and... Uh, we now have uh, word uh, from the Russian search and recovery forces that the vehicle landed on its uh, side. Uh, search and rescue team. So that uh, 
is a data point uh, for the uh, first wave of helicopters that will be landing to help extract the crew. Again, landing occurring virtually uh, on the dot at uh, 9.58 and 35 seconds p.m. Central Time, uh, tipping over onto its side, not uncommon uh, for that to happen. So we'll be standing by for further reports and uh, any video that we may be getting shortly from the landing site itself. But uh, the, uh, the key is uh, that uh, the Expedition 41 crew is home back on Earth after its five and a half month mission on the International Space Station. The uh, recovery team uh, that will be arriving soon in uh, the uh, phalanx of helicopters that are en route to the landing site uh, include uh, NASA personnel, European Space Agency personnel, and of course uh, the Russian uh, Search and Recovery Forces uh, themselves, Rosaviatsa, that is the uh, civil aviation branch of the federal government uh, responsible uh, for uh, the uh, recovery operations of returning Soyuz crews. We'll be uh, awaiting any video we get from the landing site uh, as uh, the search and recovery forces uh, begin to extract the crew uh, throughout uh, the course of its five and a half month mission. This uh, has been an extremely ebullient and effervescent crew on orbit, uh, providing uh, a new bar that has been raised in their uh, social media capabilities uh, to extend uh, their mission back uh, to people on Earth. The uh, return of the crew uh, will be uh, executed uh, with them being extracted uh, from the spacecraft, which uh, the search and recovery forces reported uh, tipped over onto its side after touchdown. They will be uh, eventually brought uh, back uh, to the staging city of Kustanai, which is uh, in northern Kazakhstan, just across the border from Russia, in uh, three separate uh, Russian Mi-8 helicopters. It's about a two-hour helicopter ride from the landing site to Kustanai. They uh, will arrive, uh, receive uh, other medical tests so once back in Kustanai. There'll be a welcoming ceremony in traditional Kazakh uh, style uh, in which they'll be greeted by local uh, Kustanai uh, officials. Uh, before uh, they split up uh, with Wiseman and Gerst aboarding a NASA jet, uh, that will fly from Kustanai to Scotland. And Scotland, uh, for a refueling stop, Gerst will disembark and be met by other European Space Agency personnel who will uh, accompany him uh, to uh, the European Astronauts Center. Wiseman will continue on uh, to Houston while Max Sarayev uh, bids farewell to his uh, crewmates in Kustanai. He'll be boarding a Gagarin Cosmonaut Training Center aircraft for a flight back to Chukalovsky Airfield just outside of his training base at the Gagarin Cosmonaut Training Center in Star City.
This is Mission Control Houston. The uh, Soyuz TMA-13M uh, with its crew of three, Max Sarayev, Reed Wiseman, and Alexander Gerst, uh, landed uh, just a few minutes ago at um, 9.58 and 35 seconds p.m. Central Time, 9.58 uh, a.m. in Kazakhstan, following a flawless uh, descent uh, through the Earth's atmosphere. Everything uh, proceeded right on the money throughout the course of the afternoon and evening uh, with the uh, hatch closure at about 3.20 p.m. Central Time earlier today, followed uh, by uh, the deorbit burn, uh, which uh, came after undocking uh, by the spacecraft from the uh, Rosviet module. The uh, events uh, that transpired uh, throughout the course of the 56-minute uh, descent uh, from the deorbit burn uh, tripped off in uh, excellent fashion uh, with the spacecraft touching down and then uh, being pulled over onto its side uh, by its uh, parachute. Not uncommon, uh, very typical. Uh, the weather conditions a bit challenging for the search and recovery forces as uh, they flew uh, from the staging city of Kustanai, uh, still en route to the landing site itself. Some of the helicopters are now already on the ground as they begin the process of working to extract the crew. We're hoping uh, to receive video from the landing site very soon. Uh, the temperature is quite frosty, 23 degrees Fahrenheit at landing time as the Soyuz descended under thick clouds and fog uh, to reach uh, the landing site itself. The uh, Russian uh, search and recovery uh, forces are beginning uh, to attend uh, to the uh, Soyuz spacecraft that is uh, on its side following its uh, bullseye touchdown at the landing site uh, some 53 miles to the northeast of Arkalik. Landing occurring uh, at 9.58 p.m. Central Time, just before 10 a.m. Kazakhstan time on Monday morning. Rather uh, cold conditions, 23 degrees Fahrenheit, uh, and uh, thick clouds and uh, fog that uh, posed a challenge uh, for the uh, helicopters that were deployed out of the uh, city of Kustanai in northern Kazakhstan. And again, we're standing by uh, for a video from the landing site itself.
This is Mission Control Houston. Uh, the uh, initial uh, helicopters on the ground, uh, part of the S Russian Search and Recovery Forces, as we uh, stand by uh, for uh, the transmission of video from the landing site. Everything uh, proceeding in smooth order uh, with the crew. And there's our first view of uh, Soyuz Commander Max Sarayev, who served as the Expedition 41 Commander as well having wrapped up his second flight into space and an aggregate total of 334 days in space on his two missions. As always, uh, quite upbeat uh, flashing of the V for victory sign, uh, being attended uh, by uh, the first uh, Russian uh, medical personnel uh, who were on the uh, first uh, helicopter down at the landing site. You can see patches of snow. Again, uh, Max Sarayev, uh, the uh, Soyuz commander, first out of the vehicle, uh, which uh, touched down right on time at uh, 9.58 and 35 now seconds p.m. Central Time, just before 10 a.m. Uh, in Kazakhstan on Monday morning. Uh, you can see a brisk wind, uh, patches of snow on the ground, temperatures hovering around the 23 degree Fahrenheit mark. The uh, helicopters landing in sequential fashion. The uh, other crew members uh, to be extracted shortly, Reed Wiseman and Alexander Gerst, having wrapped up their first flights into space respectively, 165 days in all since they were launched with Sarayev from the Baikonur Cosmodrome on May 29th. <laughs> A multinational crew returning home today, uh, wrapping up uh, their five and a half month mission. Uh, Sarayev conducted uh, one spacewalk uh, during uh, his time on orbit, a three-hour, 38-minute excursion uh, with Alexander Samakutyayev that occurred uh, late uh, in the increment that followed two uh, U.S. spacewalks out of the uh, Quest airlock in uh, U.S. Uh, extravehicular mobility units. Uh, Reed Wiseman conducting uh, two spacewalks, the first uh, with Alexander Gerst, uh, the second with uh, Barry Wilmore, who now is on board the station, along with Elena Sorova and Alexander Samakutyayev, uh, as a three-person crew for the next two weeks until uh, they are joined uh, by the next trio of residents who will be launched two weeks from today, U.S. time, in the wee hours of uh, Monday, November 24th, that uh, consisting of NASA flight engineer Terry Virts, who will become the commander of Expedition 43 next March. He'll be launched uh, along with Soyuz Commander Anton Shkaplerov and another European Space Agency flight engineer, Samantha Cristoforetti. While uh, Max Sarayev is attended to, uh, sitting passively in his chair next uh, to his Soyuz capsule, uh, the other crew members in the process of being extracted. <laughs> This uh, recovery operation uh, executed in uh, flawless fashion by the uh, Rosaviatsa Search and Recovery Forces uh, who uh, have a knack of overcoming adverse conditions. In this case, so it taken not the, the, the snow, but uh, it was uh, a case of low clouds and fog. 
that uh, initially delayed uh, the uh, deployment of the helicopters from Kustanai, the staging city, finally arriving on scene. They are still en route, uh, landing in sequential fashion as part of the, the recovery operations underway. Просто у меня здесь генератор, просто очень забивать все будет. This all part of the uh, routine uh, initial medical tests that are performed by the uh, Russian uh, nurses and uh, flight surgeons uh, following the landing of a Soyuz vehicle. There are uh, teams of uh, NASA and European Space Agency personnel uh, that are uh, part of this uh, recovery team, and they'll be attending uh, to Reed Wiseman and Alexander Gerst here shortly after they're extracted from the Soyuz. And uh, Alexander Gerst of the European Space Agency. A German volcanologist uh, who spent uh, five and a half months on board the International Space Station looking none the worse for wear. I have one right here. What about yours? This is a uh, very, very uh, important time for the European Space Agency. Uh, Gerst uh, returning to Earth uh, this evening. This is followed on Tuesday by the anticipated landing of the Philae lander from the Rosetta spacecraft on the comet uh, that uh, the mothership has been orbiting now for some time. And in two weeks, uh, the launch of Samantha Cristoforetti, the Italian uh, Air Force pilot uh, who will be launched to the International Space Station for a five and a half month mission of her own. Hello, Nikolaevich. I cannot hear very well, but I'm reporting everything is good. Understood. I tried calling you today, all day, and yesterday, but failed to reach you. I mean, yesterday, actually. Okay. 
I cannot hear you. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Bye. The uh, Soyuz landing day for the returning crew members is as much uh, an endurance test as it is uh, a test of technical prowess, uh, an extremely long day. This began uh, early Sunday morning uh, when the crew woke up. Uh, they had a final meal together uh, with the remaining crew members on board, Barry Wilmore, Alexander Samakutiaev, and Elena Sorova. It doesn't hurt anywhere. Before they uh, moved into final farewells and hatch closure, shortly after 3 p.m. Central Time, uh, the preparations uh, for undocking that occurred at 6.31 p.m. Central Time, and then uh, the deorbit burn and the high-speed entry back into the Earth's atmosphere. And there is Reed Wiseman, the NASA flight engineer, home after five and a half months in space. That's what you call it, channel on some force of four veins. Naval commander and test pilot Reed Wiseman, who became a worldwide sensation through social media during his time up on orbit, back uh, seated next to his crewmates, Max Sarayev and Alexander Gerst. On the right is his flight surgeon, uh, Dr. Steve Hart. So you've got water? Yes. Are you thirsty? A little bit. Yeah, that's all right. I can drink later. So what's the pressure for MCC? Shoot, and even we're just about to land directly, but uh, because of the parachute, we ended on one side. But uh, other than that, everything is nominal. Would you like to say something to your family? Yes, here I am. Here we are on Earth. We'll soon be back home. But in fact, if I can uh, elaborate a little bit, 
I can say that we've uh, been left without some details on board the station, but we are hearing what's going on now, and here is a perfect example. Here have Germany and the U.S. They have worked together for half a year. We completed our fine program. We've uh, received a few cargo vehicles and uh, space vehicles. Everything was uh, fine. Everything was uh, in uh, the spirit of cooperation. So I think that everybody needs to learn and follow the example of uh, ISS crew members. Don't get insulted. Don't try to prove uh, anything to each other. Let's try and uh, live together side by side. This is the most important thing, and then we'll have good results. Yeah, showing a good example. Thank you. Max Sarayev uh, providing his own uh, commentary and assessment of his uh, own expedition and a lesson in international cooperation, touting uh, the uh, cooperation uh, that he and his crewmates, who had a special affection for one another and an affinity uh, for spaceflight, uh, a Russian. Uh, Air Force Colonel, Reed Wiseman there, a Navy commander test pilot, and uh, a German uh, scientist, a volcanologist, Alexander Gerst, now home back on Earth after 165 days in space. Yeah, we do, absolutely. I've been working just landed. The best commander, Maxim Viktorovich, excellent commander, and I'm certainly very happy to be back on Earth. This is very good, and uh, it's nice, it'd be nice if, if it snowed, because uh, the air is cold right now. Thank you very much. <laughs> Wiseman uh, hailing uh, the exploits of uh, his Soyuz commander, Max Sarayev, and uh, perhaps a few words forthcoming from Alexander Gerst now. Yes, I can. <laughs> I need to ask the doctor. He has not landed just yet. That's fine. Let's go ahead. So, number three, please. So, are you ready? Alexander, good morning. Good morning. Congratulations on the successful landing. Thank you. Would you mind saying a few words about how the landing went? Went well? Nominal for us, for me. My first time in space. First time I got back from space. That was good. I felt myself fine. Good. Great team with our leader, Max. Thank you for your support, of course. To everybody. Thank you and all the best. Thanks. Could you wave your hand for, for the mission control? Uh, I'm not bad. Everything is amazingly heavy in my head a little bit, but I'm not that bad. So, uh, comments uh, from all three crew members, uh, prompted by uh, a member of the uh, Search and Recovery Forces, Alexei Lukianov, who uh, asked uh, all three crew members uh, for their uh, reaction uh, to their on-time landing uh, that uh, went by the book as uh, the Soyuz TMA-13M spacecraft uh, 
touchdown about 53 miles to the northeast of the town of Arkaluk. Uh, the crew uh, will be uh, Time to move. returning uh, to the staging city of Kustanai, Kazakhstan, before long uh, for uh, further medical exams. And uh, th there they will split up with Wiseman and Gerst boarding a NASA jet flying back to Scotland, uh, where Gerst will uh, be dropped off uh, to be greeted by other European Space Agency personnel. That uh, will be followed by Wiseman uh, pressing ahead uh, to fly back uh, to Houston. Sarayev will be flying back to Star City, Russia, and his training base. Hello, we're from Chelyabinsk, your hometown. We've just come here for the purpose of seeing you, talking to you. Can you say something to your fellow? countrymen. Well, what can I say? I'm really happy. I'm glad that uh, the dreams have been fulfilled. <laughs> That's uh, the most important thing that even most reckless adventures do. A broad smile on the face of Reed Wiseman, who uh, returned uh, home today along with Max Sarayev and Alexander Gerst five and a half months after leaving the planet. Wiseman uh, conducted two spacewalks during his time on orbit. Record amount of research uh, conducted by this crew along uh, with their other crewmates on board the International Space Station. Other uh, helicopters are in the process of landing. One of them uh, containing a NASA public affairs officer, Dan Hewitt, uh, who has been uh, part of the uh, NASA recovery team. We uh, may be hearing from him shortly. Sarayev uh, now being hoisted uh, in his uh, reclining chair to be brought into the nearby inflatable medical tent uh, where uh, it has been determined uh, that there will be time uh, for other uh, post-landing uh, medical exams. The crew uh, will have an opportunity now to uh, get out of their Russian uh, Sokol launch and entry suits into more comfortable clothing uh, before they are uh, brought uh, back into respective helicopters uh, to be uh, flown back to Kustanai, Kazakhstan, the staging city for today's landing operations. And as you can see, uh, Reed Wiseman being brought into the uh, inflatable medical tent. And there's Alexander Gerst. Она вербьет все равно. Она выше. Она еще репортаж. Она нет, она здесь ничего не идет. Пол, картинка идет. Are you still filming? Yes, the image is still going on. Вот водители кто? Из антенны вместе. Я вас посажу напротив антенны. Не надо. Ну вот стоите всегда неправильно. In uh, 23 degree weather, with patches of snow on the ground, uh, you can see that the uh, Soyuz uh, was moved into an upright position, enabling uh, RSC Energia personnel uh, to begin uh, removing uh, some of the critical cargo that was brought back uh, to Earth in uh, the descent module. The crew is now uh, back inside the medical tent. Uh, they'll be uh, assisted out of their Sokol launch and entry suits. This uh, will take uh, the better part of about 45 minutes to an hour. 
uh, before they are loaded back onto Russian Mi-8 helicopters, three of them, uh, to uh, be flown uh, about two hours back to the staging city of Kustanai, Kazakhstan. This is Mission Control Houston. Uh, you're looking at uh, the uh, inflatable medical tent, uh, which is uh, just a several yards away from uh, the Soyuz descent module inside the medical tent, uh, the three crew members who have returned home from space aboard the Soyuz TMA-13M spacecraft. And at the landing site is NASA Public Affairs Officer Dan Hewitt. Dan, uh, greetings to you on what appears to be a frosty Monday morning in Kazakhstan. How are things at the landing site? Well, hey, Rob, as you can see, it's already beginning to not so much here uh, where I'm standing, but there's been quite a bit of snow uh, in the country. We we hit a bit of weather, as you probably heard about, uh, on our way out here. The helos got a little delayed, and I myself actually just stepped down as they were carrying the crew in. But uh, if anything, it's just a, another testament to the, the robustness of the Soyuz and the capabilities of all these search and recovery forces to get us out here safely today. Give us a, a little word picture, if you can, Dan, about uh, the flight down from Kustanai. Uh, we understand that you uh, all were flying pretty low in altitude uh, because of the fog and uh, thick clouds. Yeah, we had to stay low. There were some uh, ceilings that they were worried about, and of course, uh, the freezing fog, as uh, we've been talking about so much while we've been out here, it's one of the the biggest concerns for these helicopters when they make the trip, uh, there's a tendency for ice to build up, uh, temperatures drop too low, and there's too much precipitation. So we were flying pretty low on the way in, but honestly, clouds are pretty high right now. There's no fog. We were expecting some snow here at the landing zone, but no snow right now. Sounds like a lot of the, uh, the harsher weather is staying uh, quite a ways west of us, so we got pretty lucky today. It's going to get a little dicier. Uh, as the days goes as the days go on, uh, but certainly an acceptable day for landing the vehicle down safely. The crew already inside a medical tent. Dan, so uh, if you can uh, give us uh, a glimpse now of the chronology of what uh, the crew will be doing uh, over the next uh, few hours, uh, the return trip, and uh, how they will be dispositioned from this point on. Yeah, sure thing. So right now they're in the medical tent. They're doing their initial checkouts. Uh, Reed Wiseman is going to be participating in uh, the, he's going to be the latest participant in a series of field test exercises that we've been doing uh, with some of the crew members as soon as they get down on the ground. Uh, those exercises looking at very basic things, you know, having the astronaut stand up, face your functions, things like that. That may not sound like much, but when you're readapting to gravity after six months, uh, you know, the first couple of hours will be very vital, uh, not only for these returning astronauts, but it's going to be a very important data point for us as we send astronauts, men and women to Mars. We need to know how well they'll be able to function as soon as they hit gravity again once they get back down on the ground. So once we're done here in the medical tent, as you can see, we're moving pretty quickly, uh, trying to get everybody out of the cold. We're going to load them into the choppers and uh, head back on up to Kusanai where we'll do the uh, welcoming ceremony, uh, depending on how the guys are feeling, 
and then they'll be uh, heading back to home bases, uh, Max Drive getting in the GCTC plane, heading back to Star City in Russia, and then uh, Reed Wise and Alexander Gers are going to get on the NASA plane and make their way back uh, over to Houston. Alexander Gers will actually uh, be going straight back to uh, his home base uh, in Europe, though. And Dan, uh, looking at uh, the cold weather that you're enduring at this moment uh, makes my bones chill uh, since uh, we'll be launching a, another trio of crew members in two weeks and it only gets colder from here. It does, and I, honestly, I think you, you went through a little bit colder when you were here back in March. Uh, the wind isn't too bad right now. If anything, it's just starting to wake everybody up a little bit more as we're standing here. but. Uh, definitely a little cold. It's not Houston, but definitely bearable. Sounds good, Dan. Uh, well, we appreciate it very much. Uh, we're uh, going to be getting some replays here, it appears, uh, of the Soyuz in the final seconds uh, of its descent for landing that we're looking at at the moment. And here's our replay of uh, landing. Uh, let's keep you on the on the line here for just a second. And there were the soft landing engines firing just a second uh, before touchdown that occurred at 9.58 uh, p.m. Central Time, not quite an hour ago. Uh, the crew was extracted uh, within about 35 minutes, uh, all looking hale and hearty. Dan, uh, we thank you for your time. Uh, have a safe trip back to Kustanai and then back to the United States. And uh, Thanks uh, for uh, participating uh, and joining us, uh, even though it was a bit late today. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, thanks for, for trying to get warm. Please stay warm and uh, fly safe back to Kustanai. Uh, Dan, uh, Dan Hewitt, NASA Public Affairs Officer, joining us from the landing site northeast of Arkalik as he uh, is standing right next to the Soyuz TMA-13M descent module, uh, which uh, brought... Uh, Max Sarayev, Reed Wiseman, and Alexander Gerst home after 165 days in space. Uh, now you're watching a replay uh, of one of the all-terrain vehicles uh, making its way uh, from uh, a nearby parked position at the landing zone to the spacecraft itself just a, a few seconds after uh, the Soyuz touchdown uh, at 9.58 p.m. Central Time. The Soyuz landed and then uh, tipped over onto its side, uh, which is not uncommon, especially in, in heavy wind dragged onto its side uh, by the uh, girth of its parachute. Uh, but uh, the crew was extracted in uh, rapid fashion, uh, all uh, placed in uh, chairs nearby the spacecraft uh, to allow themselves a few minutes uh, to regain their equilibrium and then were carried inside the inflatable medical tent where they're now being attended to for routine post-landing medical exams uh, prior to uh, being loaded back onto uh, their respective helicopters for about a two-hour flight uh, to the staging city in Kustanai in northern Kazakhstan. And uh, there's a sight we don't typically see, uh, the wind uh, carrying the parachute uh, and uh, tipping the Soyuz over onto its side. But you can see how quickly uh, the initial team of uh, search and recovery uh, personnel uh, were at uh, the scene to attend to the crew and uh, its their rapid extraction from the descent module. That is the only section of the three-section Soyuz spacecraft that uh, is brought home. Uh, with the crew inside, Max Sarayev was seated in the center seat of the Soyuz. Uh, to his left uh, was Reed Wiseman. To his right, Alexander Gerst. And again, uh, this is a live view now from the landing site. Uh, the Soyuz uh, was uh, placed back into an upright position. Uh, the uh, stand uh, with its ladder uh, built around uh, the Soyuz to enable uh, technical personnel to begin extracting cargo from inside the Soyuz descent module. Up on the International Space Station, uh, three crew members uh, continue uh, the uninterrupted uh, 
continuous human presence that began uh, with the arrival of the Expedition 1 crew uh, back on uh, November 2nd, 2000. Now more than 14 years of a continuous U.S. presence uh, aboard the station uh, being maintained by the new Expedition 42 commander, Barry Wilmore of NASA, and his Russian crewmates, Alexander Samokutyaev and Elena Sorova of the Russian Federal Space Agency. Together, they will uh, form a three-person crew for the next two weeks until the next trio of residents uh, will be launched from the Baikonur Cosmodrome, which is well to the southwest of this landing site. Uh, that trio consisting of NASA flight engineer Terry Wirtz, Soyuz Commander Anton Shkaplerov, and European Space Agency flight engineer Samantha Cristoforetti. Last week, uh, they uh, wrapped up all of their uh, training preparations at the Gagarin Cosmonaut Training Center in Star City outside of Moscow and uh, will be flying uh, down to the launch site of the Baikonur Cosmodrome on Tuesday on Veterans Day Did to uh, begin their final two weeks of pre-launch training. Their launch is scheduled on Sunday, November 23rd U.S. time at 3.01 p.m. Central Time which will be 3.01 a.m. at the Baikonur Cosmodrome on Monday, November 24th, launching on a four-orbit, six-hour rendezvous to reach the International Space Station. I will make it quick. All right. Thank you. Have a look if you got something because I just didn't show well. that. So you actually got a picture too. Get some? Okay. This is Mission Control Houston, half a world away on the barren steppe of Kazakhstan. Uh, you're looking at uh, RSC Energia and Russian search and recovery personnel uh, continuing uh, to
to work around uh, the descent module of the Soyuz TMA-13M spacecraft that uh, brought home uh, Reed Wiseman, Alexander Gerst, and Max Sarayev. Uh, they landed uh, one hour ago, were quickly extracted uh, from the spacecraft, placed uh, on uh, reclining uh, chairs uh, just by the capsule uh, to enable uh, themselves to uh, regain uh, their land legs after 165 days of weightlessness. They are now inside uh, the nearby inflatable medical tent, uh, attending uh, to uh, for initial routine uh, post-landing medical examinations that are always part of a Soyuz landing. Uh, their uh, Russian Sokol launch and entry suits uh, by now have been removed. Uh, they'll be uh, donning more comfortable clothing and warm clothing uh, to ward off uh, the 23 degree Fahrenheit uh, weather outside uh, before they are placed inside uh, respective helicopters for about a two hour flight uh, back to Kustanai, Kazakhstan in northern uh, Kazakhstan just across the border from Russia uh, for a uh, traditional Kazakh ceremony and then uh, to board uh, both NASA and uh, Russian aircraft to fly back uh, to Europe first uh, where Alexander Gerst uh, will be uh, met by other European Space Agency personnel en route back uh, to the European Astronaut Center. Reed Wiseman will press on uh, to return to Houston and uh, Max Sarayev will be returning uh, to uh, Star City, Russia to his training base. You can see part of the uh, flotilla, the phalanx of Russian Mi-8 helicopters uh, that are always part of a recovery operation uh, in Kazakhstan. And uh, once again, there is that uh, inflatable medical tent in which uh, the uh, crew is currently uh, undergoing uh, those routine post-landing medical tests. Everything went by the book uh, from the time uh, the crew uh, began its uh, landing preparations on board the station on Sunday afternoon. Uh, the hatch closure, the undocking, the deorbit burn, uh, their High-speed entry back into the Earth's atmosphere, culminating with a, an on-time touchdown at 9.58 p.m. Central Time, 9.58 a.m. Kazakhstan Time on Monday morning. And with post-landing activities uh, ongoing in uh, good fashion, uh, despite uh, the cold temperatures at the landing site, uh, we uh, can wrap it up uh, for tonight's uh, coverage of the return of the Expedition 41 crew. Once again, uh, Reed Wiseman, the NASA flight engineer, Soyuz Commander Max Sarayev, and Alexander Gerst of the European Space Agency, safely home back on Earth after a journey of 70 million miles spanning 165 days in space. Everything uh, continued uh, per uh, the timeline throughout the course of the day and uh, this evening's activities. It was a bullseye touchdown uh, for the Soyuz spacecraft, landing uh, about 53 miles to the northeast of Arkalik, Kazakhstan. Uh, the crew uh, now undergoing 
uh, routine uh, post-landing medical tests in their inflatable medical tent uh, nearby their Soyuz descent module. Once again, uh, the uh, return of the crew to Kustanay, Kazakhstan, and then their respective return to their uh, home bases uh, will continue throughout uh, the day on Monday. And uh, that will be our advertisement uh, for our continuing coverage of space station activities on Monday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time, 11 a.m. Eastern Time on Space Station Live. We are now into Expedition 42 on board the International Space Station. The new commander, Barry Wilmore of NASA, and his two Russian crewmates, Alexander Samakutiaev and Elena Sorova will act as a uh, three-person crew for the next two weeks, conducting research and maintenance on board the orbital outpost as uh, they await uh, the arrival of three new residents who will be launched in two weeks from the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan. A multinational crew back on Earth and a by uh, lateral crew uh, on board the station, all part of the ongoing uh, continuous human presence in space on board the International Space Station. So that'll wrap it up for this evening. Thank you for joining us throughout the course of the day and this evening's activities. Expedition 41, the three crew members safely back on Earth, having uh, triumphantly completed 165 days in orbit. Have a good evening and have a good week from Mission Control in Houston. We do not hear anything on a space to ground to we copy SS. Safe Moscow. Gosha, you know, it's very quiet. Before it was some interference. Uh, it's Alex talking from this station. Now, Cephius Moscow. We do not copy you uh, very well, but still. The PRC area is jumping up, up to around 10, and the ARU is um, around minus 64. That's value. Okay, copy. Thank you. As you can see uh, from the clock, uh, some 37 and a half minutes until the anticipated landing of the Soyuz uh, to the northeast of Arkalik. Everything going very well. Uh, the crew, uh, in its last reports, indicated uh, that uh, the pressure inside the descent module is uh, holding steady. Everything in good shape. Uh, standing by for the next milestone that will come about uh, 11 minutes, 12 minutes from now. That will be the separation of the three sections of the uh, Soyuz vehicle pyrotechnically on computer command. Cephius ISS, we also copy you. I wish you good luck. Thank you. Thank you, Sasha. Maxim Reed Alexander. Yelena is sending her, uh, her regard. She is, uh, you know, very, a little bit worried about you. She is, um, she is concerned. Alexander Samakutiaev on board the International <laughs> Space Station uh, talking uh, to the crew on the Soyuz, talking to Max Sarayev. Uh, yes. Like that. Indicating that the crew is wishing uh, the returning crew in the Soyuz vehicle, the station crew is, uh, wishing all, all the best for a soft landing. Time to touch down, 36 minutes. But everything on board the Soyuz is in good shape so far as uh, the crew uh, targets 
its landing zone to the northeast of Arkalik with search and recovery helicopters from the Russian uh, search and recovery forces, Ros Aviatsa, uh, currently en route flying below thick decks of clouds toward the landing zone. This is the point uh, that we anticipated uh, either choppy communications, uh, sporadic communications, or a complete loss of communication as uh, the Soyuz descends uh, toward the atmosphere with uh, atmospheric entry expected uh, in about 12 minutes. Pass This is Mission Control Houston. You're looking at a live view of the uh, large flight control room at the Russian Mission Control Center in Karyov on the outskirts of Moscow. Uh, the Russian flight controller is in charge of uh, the Soyuz landing operations, monitoring all of the Soyuz systems as uh, Soraya, Wiseman, and Gerst uh, begin to slip out of uh, Earth orbit and move into uh, the upper reaches of the Earth's atmosphere. They will uh, reach uh, the point uh, called entry interface, uh, which is atmospheric entry at an altitude of about 400,000 feet at 9.35 p.m. Central Time. Just a few minutes later, about seven minutes after that, uh, the G-loads uh, on the crew will build up uh, to their maximum, of about three to four Gs, uh, at an altitude uh, of about 34 kilometers at 9.42 p.m. That's just before the command is issued to uh, deploy the parachutes, first a drogue chute and then uh, the main parachute under which uh, the Soyuz will spend about 14 minutes uh, descending uh, to the landing site, which is about 53 statute miles to the northeast of the town of Arkalik in the northern zone for this uh, landing that is underway uh, following the deorbit burn uh, that occurred on time at 9.05 p.m. Central Time. It is right now 9.17 a.m. Monday morning at the landing site in Kazakhstan. Uh, the first light of day at the landing site. We're hoping to get video from the landing site before long or certainly after touchdown in order to be able to uh, share with you all of the activities uh, on the recovery of this Expedition 41 crew that began its journey to the International Space Station back on May 29th in temperatures more than 50 degrees warmer than uh, the crew will experience upon their return this evening with landing schedule 41 minutes from now. We are ready to meet you on the landing site. Thank you. Vosha, I did not understand what you said though, but never mind. The search and rescue team is ready to meet you on the landing site. That uh, search and rescue team uh, currently en route in uh, the fleet of uh, Russian Mi-8 helicopters. Two of those helicopters uh, have peeled off and are heading for the ballistic landing site uh, to the southwest of the nominal landing site in the unlikely event a problem would occur that uh, would result in uh, the Soyuz landing short of its intended target. But so far, all of the Soyuz systems are functioning perfectly.
Это который ТК 1 на РУ минус 62, а вот этот вот ты имеешь в виду, да, Сергей? Да, 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 да. Сетия смотка. Так, иногда заварей будет для, для статистики интересно. Слушай, да, давай я Лене дам он этот, чтобы я следил за этим, за экипажем. Давай, 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 хорошо. Она в курсе. Вот, да, по пункту 8.3. Вот. Трастер, активация, say again. You are, must be ready for this thruster activation, right? Yes, yes we are ready, Moscow. Seven minutes for one mark, and please monitor how the command goes through. Yeah. Will do, Moscow. At this hour, uh, the International Space Station and the Soyuz vehicle flying 12 kilometers apart, uh, passing 262 statute miles uh, just uh, to the east of Argentina, about to begin a southwest to northeasterly track across the South Atlantic in an orbit inclined 51.6 degrees to either side of the equator. Now just over two minutes from the deorbit burn. Two minutes. But what about the next flight? Ah, okay. <laughs> That's crazy. Okay. In the uh, descent module, once again, Max Sarayev in the center seat as Soyuz commander, flanked on his left by Reed Wiseman as board engineer number one for tonight's entry and landing. Alexander Gerst from the European Space Agency on the right of Surayev, a unique moment for the European Space Agency, another ESA astronaut, Samantha Cristoforetti, about uh, to be launched two weeks from now, along with Terry Wirtz and Anton Shkaplerov to the International Space Station, that crew to fly down to the Baikonur Cosmodrome on Tuesday for the final two weeks of their training. Don't be sad. One minute away from the deorbit burn. Another flight after that. Okay, the command on the mode stabilization went through and is there. Yes, we are waiting for the opening of the SKD cover. The cover is open. Do you confirm? Uh, do you confirm, Maxim, there is GSO or uh, in uh, attitude signal? Yes. And we are standing by for Maxim. It's a reminder. During the descent, please uh, do the reports. Can now just 15 seconds away, standing by for the initiation of the deorbit burn. Uh, come with us. Okay, copy, Moscow. This thruster activated. And the deorbit burn is now underway. 047 is acceleration. Over the uh, South Atlantic, a four minute, 41 second retrograde firing of the Soyuz engine. Seven meters, eight meters. This thruster. Operated for 25 seconds, 046 is acceleration. It's stage 107. Okay, this thruster works for 38 seconds, propellant 32 seconds, 045 is the acceleration. Okay, so the burn and the 
time of operation. 58 seconds, 26.7, one minute, 28. Max Sarayev uh, reporting back to the Russian flight control team on the uh, duration of the burn, the rate of deceleration and propellant consumption. Minute 18, 20 seconds, 36 meters. Minute 30 seconds, 40 meters. Minute 35 seconds, 44 meters. Acceleration is 0 0.46 and is stable. Minute 45, 48 meters. Minute 55, 52 meters. And the pressure in the burner is stable. Two minutes, 54 meters. Great. Everything is according to the stable propellant uh, consumption, 128 minutes, 10, 59 meters, 60 meters. Two minutes, 18 to 20, 64 meters. Two minutes, 24 66 meters. Two thirty, sixty-eight meters. Good. The acceleration is stable, 0 0.46, 240, 73 meters. About two minutes to go in the deorbit burn. Everything looking great so far. 76 meters. Two minutes, 53, 79 meters. The first stage, uh, the pressure is stable, 0 0.47 is acceleration, 84.5 meters, 3 minutes 10 seconds, 87 meters, 3 minutes 20 seconds, 91 meter, 92, 3 Minutes, 30 seconds, 96 meters. Copy, Maxim. Thank you. And what about the continuous reporting? Three minutes, 40 seconds, uh, 101 meter. Acceleration, 0 0.47, stable. 3, 48, 49, 106 meters. And the pressure is stable. 0 0.47 is the acceleration. 3 minutes, 59. 4 minutes. 256 kilograms propellant. 100. About 40 seconds left in the deorbit burn. Minutes, 10 seconds. 115 meters. 4 minutes. 20 seconds. 120 meters. Four minutes, 27, 28 seconds, 125 meters. Okay, the command is sent, Gekka. So the burn is complete, 128 meters, 0 point, 128.1. The thruster deactivated. The cut off command went through. And the deorbit burn is complete and perfect. We Expedition 41 on its way home after 165 days in space. A Russian Air Force Colonel, Max Sarayev, an American Navy commander and test pilot, Reed Wiseman, and a German volcanologist, Alexander Gerst, heading home for a frozen scrub of land on the steppe of Kazakhstan, touchdown expected less than 48 minutes from now. And clear, and we copy your report. Thank you. 320 BO pressure, SA 789 and stable. Copy.
pressure 225 SR 789 and stable. Copy. We copy you loud and clear, Maxim. Thank you. Same here. Maxim, it's page 110. Now, for the procedure. And uh, the rescue aid should be ready. And uh, then uh, until the separation itself. So say again, page 110. Yes, continue uh, reporting, please. Okay, copy Moscow. Russian flight controllers at the Russian Mission Control Center in Korolyov uh, urging uh, Max Sarayev, reminding him uh, to uh, continue reporting on all uh, of the spacecraft status. The next major milestone will be the separation, the pyrotechnic separation of the three sections of the Soyuz vehicle. In advance of that, uh, the uppermost section, known as the orbital module, uh, has been uh, depressurized. The crew is monitoring all of that activity on board. Uh, about uh, 12 uh, or so minutes from now, uh, the uh, Soyuz uh, will be passing out of the guaranteed range of uh, communications for space-to-space -space VHF voice capability uh, through the antennas on uh, the International Space Station. But we'll uh, continue to monitor all of the uh, conversation on this VHF loop. Uh, the Soyuz crew eventually will come into range of an Antonov-12 fixed-wing aircraft that is a flying uh, command and control center for the Russian search and recovery forces. Uh, all of the helicopters have departed uh, the Kustanai Airport. They're en route, flying low uh, below thick decks of clouds, uh, en route to the landing site some 53 miles to the northeast of the town of Arkalik. Pressure 36 millimeters. SR descent module is 789 and stable. Copy, Cepheus. We copy you loud and clear. Same here, Moscow. Maxim, it's a reminder. Before the arming of the seats, please monitor that there are no foreign objects that might be in the way of the our seat. Busha, I understand. When possible, we will do it every minute that there are no foreign objects that might interfere with the arming of the seat. Thank you so much, Maxim. I am very grateful. You're welcome. 